Hello, you're watching Off New X, and today let's talk about the recently finished airing Chinese crime drama Chen Feng Shi San Zai, Thirteen Years of Dust. This is a 24-episode drama that has just finished airing on the web platform iQIYI, directed by Liu Haibo, who was also the director of Tian Sheng Changge, Sheng Huo Jia, San Cha Ji, written by Lou Xiaopeng, based on his own novel published back in 2020 called An Ye Zhi Guang. The drama is produced by iQIYI, led by Chen Jianbin, Chen Xiao, then many other quite well-known actors such as Chuai Ni, Liu Mitao, Wang Xiao, Tan Kai. One very unusual aspect and quite costly thing for this drama is that it was shot at two separate times, crossing a nine-month time span. Because as the title suggests, one part of the story concentrates at one particular time back in 1997, then the other part was 13 years later in 2010. So they decided to shoot these two parts of the story at two different seasons, one whole month production time in winter and one whole month production time in summer. That's actually a not easy to manage schedule, usually costs more money, but it shows that this drama really wants to tell the story and give it proper respect. Therefore, they picked the harder and more expensive way of doing it. Since this drama has already finished, I've watched all 24 episodes. I'll give it a two gold mine rating. I wouldn't say this is my favorite type of crime drama, case breaking drama, but I still appreciate a lot of things it has done. This drama is a two timeline intertwined with each other with editing type of drama. In the 1997 timeline, you will come across Chen Jianbin playing the team leader of a police station who works in the very rough style with very strong character. And Chen Xiao's role is a newbie who just graduated from police academy and you will follow him pretty much starting from his first day getting his post in this police station and very naturally becomes the student under Chen Jianbin. First day he got into this police station, he encounters a massive case that's gonna run 13 years, which is a serial killing case. You will also get introduced to the 2010s timeline. Now Chen Xiao's role has become a new team leader of the crime investigation department of that police station and has in many ways inherited his teacher's behaviors and methods of breaking cases. Whereas the much older policeman Chen Jianbin in place has moved on to administrative position, taking care of police library. To their misery, the case that they didn't manage to break 13 years ago comes back. Either the previous culprit they didn't manage to catch has come back to business or there is a new copycat. The student and the teacher team up again trying to break this case. Now let's get into the specifics, the good and bad in my opinion, so that you can decide whether you should uh, spend your time watching this 24 episode drama. On the positive end, the first point very quickly mentioning it, it's shot in Chongqing and it's one of those dramas that utilize the landscape, the geography better than other dramas. They really located the story into the physical space and the space becomes also a kind of character. And there's one interesting design sequence of shot that integrates the character's life into the cityscape change and stuff. A little bit like the opening quite epic shot of My Love from the Star from Korean drama. If you've watched that drama, you know which shot I'm talking about. You're gonna get in the middle part or late middle part in this drama a similar shot that's very well designed and they really don't have to do it and the story will just go and flow as well. But they bother to design and spend money on it. And I still highly appreciate that. The second positive thing about this drama is the casting. Everybody is really well picked for the role and they all do a very good job. I think this is average out. The best crime drama I've seen so far this year from Chinese Dramaland regarding both the genre, the storytelling quality, but also the casting and the performance. And it's a very balanced and even drama. Although it is mainly Chen Jianbin and Chen Xiao's story, you wouldn't feel anybody else outside of them are redundant. As for the two leads, 
Chen Jianbin proves when he's doing suitable roles, he is just such a great actor. Although these days he doesn't do that much acting anymore, he mostly works behind the scene. And he did take part in a really, I do not recommend you to watch drama that looks pretty embarrassing. Shouldn't be existing a drama. But apart from that, significant failure. His other stuff are all very good. And this drama proves again that this is a teacher level actor. Chen Xiao, I admit I got into this drama because I just want to look at his pretty face. <laughs> I really appreciate the fact that he plays a normal person in his drama. There's no special ability that he has that is that much better than everybody else. And in his acting, he also brings that to life, which is on one hand, you can tell this is a very good looking guy, but on the other hand, you definitely see him as an ordinary person, not the superhero. There's very little beautifying. I don't think he's wearing any makeup even. And he even insisted that for people to tell easily 90 7 and 2010 timeline, he had his hairline shaved back when he's in the closer to now 2010 timeline. In reality, he doesn't really look any different hairline wise uh, compared to when he was younger, but he insisted that. So very good attitude, very proper actor thing he does. And one thing I really appreciate among these two lead actors is they really have a great working chemistry. And on the script level, it definitely also milks quite heavily on this mirroring effect between the teacher and student. 13 years earlier, they're like this. 13 years later, it almost is a reverse because now they are working in very different capacity. You see a lot of lines and a lot of actions, behaviors mirror, and these two actors bring that to life. Then for the other supporting roles, Tan Kai, a sad, tragic person, my favorite bad guy this year. I honestly prefer him to Zhang Songwen's role because in Knockout, I think they really put too much emphasis on the bad guy that it's a little bit over the top. Whereas in this drama, the bad guy <laughs> actually has a much more palatable personality and I highly appreciate character arc. Wang Xiao is as good as he always is. He can play anything and he can convince you with his acting of any role he picks and does. Chuan Ni, she's got a really good role recently, also in the ITE drama in Echo, but she's a much more supporting role in that drama compared to this one because she plays the wife of Chen Xiao. She has quite a lot of screen time. She does such good and natural and relaxed performances. And you so believe the love, the romantic, but also the troubled marriage she has with Chen Xiao's Wow, it's very convincing. Liu Mintao, I believe most people know her from Nirvana in Fire Days. And in recent years, she hasn't had the best roles and often is criticized about her tendency to overact. In this drama, she doesn't do that. She is the wife of Chen Jianbing's role and really good acting. And they really look like Lao Fu Lao Qi, old husband, old wife, who's been together for decades. Then you have more supporting roles who have less screen time, but every one of them is good. The third positive thing about this drama, and the most important thing, is this is overall quite solid script. And it didn't go for the extremely exciting page turner, lots of twist, high intelligence, crazy heightened moments, crime drama style. This story picks the much less exciting, but much more grinding and probably more realistic approach to breaking a big case. I mean, eventually, obviously, a story will give you resolution, but it it's very hard earned, unlike Sherlock, basically. <laughs> it is the boring way of getting things done. Particularly back in the 1997 timeline when DNA wasn't even available at the time in China and there's no digitizing of things when they try to find from a library's record, there's no computer record. They can just excel and then search. They have to physically go in and go through unbelievable number of records manually to find a clue. The drama is filled with that type of details. And I know it sounds like it would be boring, but it's not. It does a really good balance of showing you all the boring detail, the not going anywhere with that much effort process of breaking a case with very observant and well-written details 
of the characters of their relationship with other people, their work life and their personal life. And so this is a little bit anti-hero kind of drama, by which I mean there isn't a definitive much better than everyone else lead who comes in as if he's destined and gotten to solve the problems. It is led by very ordinary, very fallible. Had he not done that many wrong things and make so many wrong decisions, maybe all the tragedies in the story would not even happen on the leading characters in this drama, but you will still appreciate them a lot. So the not on the surface very satisfying, exciting element of this crime drama is actually its strength. Then the last thing I would say on the positive end is we derive conclusion by comparison. That's human nature. We compare prices on internet and decide which model we buy, pretty much also based on that human process in the brain. To look at this crime drama, you compare it to other crime drama you've seen recently. I mean, to the misfortune of that drama on Yoku that just finished and I rented about. That drama also is about serial killing, also is set in 1990s, and I can't help comparing. If you have also unfortunately watched Ta Shishen and got really disappointed, this drama can ease a lot of that pain <laughs> if you go and watch it. In comparison, everything is better. Acting, script writing, the case itself, everything, even camera language and visual style. Even the office atmosphere between the main roles and supporting policemen you're gonna come across in this story, even those plots that are focused on the lesser important roles in the same office and all the difficulties they've gone through, even their story is better written, better acted, flows more naturally, and then doesn't get weird at all. Like, Ta Shishui God. <clears throat> and if you haven't watched Ta Shishui, don't watch this one. I've said a lot of good things about this drama, so what are not so good about this drama? It's not perfect. <laughs> okay, otherwise I'll give it a three goat mine. The first point is also related to the good point on the positive end. That is, this is not a very exciting case-breaking drama. Every tiny step gets very detailedly explained and therefore the whole 24 episodes are used to break one case. And it's probably also one of the reasons why it didn't get much traction while it's on air. It doesn't have those hashtag moments, dramatic moments that it's easy to promote and marketing, it's the nature of the drama. Like I said, I think they intentionally decided to do a story in this style. They don't want to always just do that type of drama, and I highly respect that. But it's also in the way a shortcoming, and it will definitely naturally <laughs> deter quite a big audience group. The second thing is, as a serial killer catching drama, it is not the best. The way they try to find this person and the way this person does all these things with his style and why, I mean, it's not bad but it's very typical. You've seen that many times. There really isn't one unusual, you kind of don't expect fresh element. And in a way, in the story, you almost see Chen Xiao's role being the, man, the person who says that to the audiences because he's the young person who's read a lot of Western records and real cases and watched a lot of documentaries and know serial killers in the West. And then profiling, psychology, that type of stuff that really at the beginning of the story did not exist in police work in China, kind of. And he would actually continuously remind his teacher Chen Jianbing's role that this is going on and then this may be due to that reason, this may be due to that reason, and his teacher would dismiss him. He would just say, ah, those things are the Westerners' inventions and it only applies to their culture, it doesn't work with ours. And you'll see that in 2010's timeline, his opinion changes. But it also says quite a lot about the fact that this story didn't jump out of that previous established tradition of serial killer cases and how it gets broken. And you even have <laughs> one camouflage bad guy, which this story misdirects you to, in a way, suspect it's him, but then it really isn't. There are multiple people, but there's one particular one that is just so used as a tool that when you eventually find out who is the bad guy and why it happened, then this camouflage person becomes almost like a joke. And he has quite a lot of screen time throughout this whole story. And then you realize that his only function is to misdirect and he's such a loser. It's a little bit anticlimax, I'd say. If they could go back to re-touch the script, they can make this row slightly more interesting. Then right now, it got a little bit funny towards the end. I will not spoil it for you, but if you've watched it, you know who I'm talking about. So that's about it. Everything I can think of that I want to talk about regarding the drama, 13 Years of Dust, 
Chen Feng, Shi San Zai. I don't regret even the minute I've spent watching this drama, but I feel a little bit disappointed by the fact that it didn't really get much noticed. We are at the end of April 2023, first third of this year, and I think if you have to pick one drama out of all the Chinese dramas that has come out this year, that is particularly in this genre, pick this one, don't pick the other ones. This yeah, it's the best one. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.